Hello friends, we are still not employed by a FANG company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Uh, today we are going to do a very important problem, house robber 2. And this is actually an extension of original house robber problem. I have already solved the house robber problem over here, so you can check out that video. And I highly recommend that you check out that video before coming, to, coming on to this problem. Uh, typically, in any interview, this problem is actually going to be asked as, an, as a follow-up question after they have originally asked this house robber problem and that is why if we see the number of companies that have asked this question recently it's actually quite small compared to what we are used to seeing for the other companies but the thing is still amazon and google have asked this recently even microsoft asked this just a little bit uh, sometimes back and also a uh, few other companies have asked this so this is a lead code medium problem and uh, basically the problem statement uh, is saying that we are professional robber and we are planning to rob houses uh, along the street now the catch over here is that the uh, all the houses in the in this given street are actually arranged in a circular fashion and also there there is one more constraint that we cannot uh, rob two houses that are adjacent to each other if we rob two houses that are adjacent to each other uh, basically police is going to be called and we will be caught uh, so this is a constraint that we have to look into and our uh, our motive is to collect uh, or gain or rob as much money as possible without being caught so let's try to uh, let's try to see a pictorial representation so basically all the houses in the street are actually placed like this so suppose if we consider that this is our first house uh, actually the first house is also neighbor of the last house uh, in the given street because all the houses are stored in a circular fashion and now since the houses are stored in a circular fashion that is one more thing that we need to consider and also we cannot rob two adjacent houses so suppose if we decide to rob this house we cannot rob this house or we cannot rob this house so the first example we are given is the houses are uh, placed like this and uh, these are the amount of money that is uh, at each house so basically since there are only three houses we can only rob one house and we need to select the house with maximum money so it's pretty simple over here that if we select this house we get the maximum money and if we rob the house with value number three we can't rob uh, these two houses because because they are adjacent to each other uh, in the second example the houses are stored like this one two three and one and uh, the most amount we can collect over here would be if we rob this house and this house so in that case the amount of money we would collect would be 4 and uh, we won't be able to rob these two houses because they would be adjacent to each other so we already know the brute force approach basically the brute force approach is to make every single uh, pair uh, and check out all the possibilities to see how we can uh, find the answer but the thing is there is no point in go exploring brute force approach over here uh, I'll directly go to the most optimal solution uh, that we are going to achieve using dynamic programming because this is an extension of uh, house robber one if you want to get get more information about the approach you can check out that video first so for the optimal solution we are going to use a custom example and this this is very important to use custom examples because it shows that you can create test cases on your own and uh, this is a really good skill to have in actual computer world so suppose the number of houses we are given over here are in this fashion and uh, let's try to draw them in a circular manner now basically we can use the same solution we were using in uh, house robber one because remember in, in house robber one what we were doing we were just simply going through whatever the input we had and we were just keeping track of what is at any location what is the maximum amount of money we can rob up until this element uh, by checking the previous values we are essentially going to do the same thing over here but just in a little bit different manner because uh, in the house robber one problem we were considering the whole thing because they were uh, all the houses were placed in a straight line so we were able to consider them like that the thing is over here the additional constraint is that whatever the last amount or the last house is is actually neighbor of the first house which we can see over here that these two houses are neighbors of each other 
which means that if we at any point decide to rob this house we cannot rob this house or vice versa that uh, if we decide to rob this house first house we need to make sure that we do not rob this house so the answer is actually quite simple rather than treating this as a circular uh, uh, street why don't we just uh, run two functions so basically uh, in, during the first uh, uh, loop during the first uh, iteration we are going to check the first sub uh, problem and let me show you what I mean the additional constraint we have over here is that if we consider this house uh, it is guaranteed that we cannot use the last house or if we use the last house it is guaranteed that we cannot use the first house so since we know that this condition exists why we are simply going to uh, do calculation twice in the first calculation we are going to check between these houses that what is the maximum amount we can rob and during the second uh, loop we are going to check that amongst these houses what is the maximum amount we can rob and then we just need to compare that what is the maximum value we have found uh, across both the loops and whatever the maximum value we find we just uh, push it, we just submit it as uh, our answer so let's iterate over the uh, entire problem okay so these are the two loops that we are going to iterate over so let's calculate the result for the first uh, loop so for at the first position the maximum amount we can rob so far is only going to be one and at the second house the maximum amount we can rob is only going to be two because we cannot rob the first house now the for the third house we have two options either we keep whatever the value of two we have or we keep uh, the value of one plus the third house value and we check we see that whatever is the maximum value amongst these two we are going to keep that so 1 plus 15 is going to be 16 and of course 16 is greater than 2 so we are going to say that up until this house number 3 the maximum amount we can rob is 16 now if, uh, we are at the fourth position now over here the maximum amount we can rob is actually two we have two options either we can rob on six, 16 units or we can do 2 plus whatever value at house number 4 we have so 2 plus 11 is actually 13 which is less than 16 so even up until this point the maximum amount we can rob is still going to remain 16 and not 13 because uh, definitely 16 is greater the va greater value so it is in our interest to uh, keep this value 16 now again we are at this position 3 and also notice that at any given location we are only considered with values that are uh, pre of previous two houses that we have calculated over here we don't need to consider all the values because we are already adding them up and we are only keeping the maximum values so this works in our favor so at value number three uh, the maximum we can achieve is either 16 plus 3 or 16 by itself which is this 16 or 16 plus 3 so of course 16 plus 3 is going to be greater so we are going to store 19 and we don't care about these values anymore because we already have the latest values so far now at value number six the maximum we can find is going to be 16 plus 6 or 19 we need to select whatever is greater so 16 plus 6 is 22 this is the greater value so we are going to keep this and we don't care about 19 so we can see that at the end of this first loop the maximum value we have found so far for this particular uh, set of houses is 22 now let's repeat the same process for the second uh, uh, loop so in the second loop for the first position the maximum we can rob so far is 2 uh, at the second house the maximum we can rob is 15 now over here the maximum we can rob is uh, either 2 plus 11 which is 13 or 15 so of course 15 is greater so we are going to keep 15 over here now at this position number 3 we can either do 15 plus 3 or compare it with 15 so 15 plus 3 is 18 so we are going to keep 18 over here now at this position we consider these two values so either we do 15 plus 6 
which is 21 or we check with 18 so 21 is greater so of course we are going to keep this one and now at this last position we check that whether 21 or 18 plus 10 so of course 18 plus 10 is 28 so we are going to keep that and we are we do not consider about 18 so after this entire loop the maximum value we have found so far is 28 and the maximum value we had found over here was 22 so our job is pretty simple we just need to see that whichever value is actually greater we simply return that and the, in this case 28 is greater than 22 so 28 would be our answer and we just return that value uh, this is a very good solution uh, we are building it on top of whatever we have solved for house uh, robber one and because we are basically using the same solution we are just changing the scope of uh, up until what points we are using this solution so just keep that in mind and uh, if we calculate the time and space complexity uh, the time complexity for this one is going to be big O of 2n uh, because we are running two loops uh, 0 to n minus 1 and n uh, 1 to n uh, so if we generic generically mention this it actually becomes it becomes big O of n and uh, if we calculate the space complexity the space complexity would be big O of 1 because we are apart from storing couple of parameters we are not using any additional space so that's why it, we we are able to run this in a constant time uh, sorry constant stay, uh, space okay let's start creating parameters so we are going to need two parameters rob1 and rob2 and we are going to initialize both to 0 We will also need two parameters to store two maximum values. So we'll name them max1 and max2. And max1 will initialize it to uh, the zeroth house. And uh, max2 we can actually initialize it to uh, zero. Because we are not going to consider the first house and we are keeping the max1 as zero. Because in case we are given the condition where we only have uh, one input. So we can simply return that. Now let's run a for loop starting from the first house so i equal to 0 to i is less than uh, length minus 1 i plus plus okay over here we are going to calculate max 1 so max 1 would be uh, maximum value amongst rob 1 plus uh, the current number we are at or uh, the value of rob 2 and we also need to update the value of rob1 and rob2 so rob1 will actually become rob2 and uh, rob2 will become the maximum value we have found so far now once we are done with this loop we need to reset the values of rob1 uh, equal to 0 and rob2 equal to 0 because we are going to use them again in the second loop and uh, we are going to create another for loop uh, i equal to 1 and we are going to set up i is less than so nums dot length i'll plus plus okay and essentially we are going to use the same conditions uh, by the way we, this would be max one uh, we are going to use the same condition so we can just reuse the code and uh, we are going to rather than calculating max one we would be calculating max two so let's do that and uh, after the second loop we still we simply need to return whatever the maximum value we have found amongst max1 and max2 and uh, this this should be the solution now notice that i am running two loops over here but the thing is uh, an efficient way to do this is to create a function and uh, function would uh, intake the parameters like start and end value and you can just repeat this process so that would be an uh, efficient way to do it do this code as well let's try to run this okay seems like our solution is working let's try to submit the code okay and our solution works in constant time uh, in zero milliseconds so that's why it's 100 percent faster than all the other solutions uh, i would be posting this solution in the comments so you can check it out from there and uh, hope you like the video if you have any more suggestions feel free to let me know and uh